Here's example three with the first derivative test. So we're going to use the first derivative test to find all the local extrema of f of x equals uh, the quantity 2x to the fifth, or sorry, 2x minus 5, uh, 2x minus 5 raised to the 7 thirds. So, um, all right, so step zero uh, here, step zero, find the domain of f of x. Because remember, a critical point has to be in the domain of f. So here, um, we're taking a number x, multiplying it by 2, subtracting 5, and then we raise to the 7 thirds. So um, there actually are no domain restrictions here. So remember, the uh, domain restrictions are um, you can't take logs of zero or negative numbers, uh, you can't divide by zero, and you can't take even roots of negative numbers. Um, but we're not taking even roots, right? We're taking an odd root, the third root. So we can take the odd root of any number. Um, but anyway, uh, no domain restrictions here. So the domain is all real numbers. So nothing worth writing down, I guess. So that's step zero, find the domain. In this case, it's all real numbers, so we're good. Uh, step one, find all the critical points of f of x. So that means take the derivative, set it equal to zero, also find out where it's undefined, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay, here's our function f. So f prime of x, um, what we're gonna have to do here, see here's two x minus five, that's a function of x. And then it's sitting inside of this exponent to the seven thirds. So we have a function inside of a function. So we're gonna have to do a power rule because of this, but also then chain rule because we have this function inside of another function. So power rule with chain rule. So the derivative is gonna be, uh, bring down the exponent, so it's gonna be seven thirds, and then uh, times the quantity two x minus five. Uh, and then the exponent gets subtracted by one, so seven thirds minus one is uh, seven thirds minus three thirds, which is four thirds. Okay, so that's seven thirds minus one, which is seven thirds minus three thirds, which is four over three. So that's what happened there. Um, okay, so now we chain rule, we have chain rule here. So this is derivative of the big guy evaluated at the little guy, and then chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the little guy. So the little guy is two x minus five, so its derivative is just two minus zero, which is just two. So that's um, our derivative there. So, you know, there's really not much left to do to simplify, but, you know, 7 thirds times 2 is 14 thirds, so uh, we might as well just write that one up. So 14 thirds times the quantity 2x minus 5 to the 4 thirds. Okay? So now that's our derivative. Um, now we just have to figure out, okay, where's this derivative 0 and where is it undefined? Well, first notice uh, 14 thirds is just a constant multiple, so 2x minus 5, everything's okay with that. Then we raise to the 4 thirds. So actually, um, there are no domain restrictions here, which means there are no values of x that make this undefined. Okay, so um, for f prime of x, you know, any value of x we toss in here is going to give us a number back. So there's no, um, there aren't any problems here. There isn't, we're not going to have any values of x that make this guy undefined. So we just want to figure out, okay, where is this equal to zero? So um, basically our equation we have to solve is 14 thirds times 2x minus 5 to the 4 thirds. Uh, equals zero. All right. So uh, let's see. What do we have? Uh, multiply both sides by three over fourteen. So or divide both sides by fourteen thirds. Either way, we just end up with two x minus five um, to the four thirds equals zero. All right. Now let's um, raise both sides to the third power. So we're going to raise both sides to the third power. Third power. Third power. So four thirds. Okay, four thirds in the exponent, and then this three in the exponent, so they cancel each other out, we're just left with four, all right? And zero to the third is just zero. So actually what we end up with is two x minus five uh, to the fourth, and then equals zero, all right? And then we take a fourth root of both sides, fourth root, fourth root, so, uh, or raise both sides of the one fourth, same thing either way. So um, these guys are gonna cancel, we're gonna end up with two x minus five, and then fourth root of zero is just zero, all right? So yeah, I think uh, most people watching the video are probably okay with going through this more quickly, but uh, for those of you who aren't, I just want to show a little more detail here. Um, so, you know, in general, when you take a fourth root, you should have a plus and a minus root, but um, zero, you know, plus zero, minus zero, it's the same thing, so we just have zero. So anyway, 2x minus 5 equals zero, um, then we can pretty easily say, all right, add 5, divide by 2, x equals 5 halves. Okay. So this is our only critical point, because it's the only value of x that makes the derivative equal to zero, and um, there are no values of x that make the derivative undefined. Okay, so that's step one, find all the critical points. Uh, now step two, make a sign chart for f prime of x. All right, so we're gonna make a sign chart 
um, using this the only critical point we have basically. So we're going to come up here, uh, make ourselves a little sign chart. This doesn't have to be that big because uh, we only have one critical point. So uh, remember, always label the sign chart. So our function is f. The derivative is f primed. This is a sign chart for the derivative, so we're going to label it f primed. Uh, and then we put five halves on here because it's the only critical point that we have. And five halves actually is about, uh, or it's exactly 2.5. So we can write that down just as a, you know, just to kind of help ourselves out. So that's um, step two, make a sign chart for the derivative. Now step three, determine the sign of the derivative in each interval. So we actually only have two intervals, negative infinity to five halves and five halves to infinity. So, um, you know, for this step, we just pick a number from each of these two intervals and then evaluate the derivative there to find out is the derivative positive, is it negative? So um, in the first interval, uh, we can pick any number we want, but a good number to pick is probably going to be 2, actually. So normally you might want to pick 0 or 1, but if we pick 2, um, we'll see why it's going to work out. So here, f prime of x, let's use this form of the derivative here. I mean, they're really pretty much the same, but we'll just use this one. So 14 thirds times 2x minus 5 to the 4 thirds. So we have 14 thirds times uh, 2, and then x is 2 in this case, so 2 times 2 minus 5 to the 4 thirds. All right, so uh, here's f prime of x evaluated at x equals 2. So now we just uh, simplify, so 14 thirds. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Okay, so remember, um, you know, if you have a number to a fractional exponent like that, so that's, um, you know, negative 1 to the 4 thirds. Uh, remember, that's the same thing as saying uh, negative 1 to the third, or sorry, to the 1 third, to the 1 third, the cube root of negative 1, and then to the fourth power, right? Or you could say negative 1 to the fourth power, and then to the 1 third, right? So you can think of it either way like that. Or with a square root type notation, it's the cube root of negative 1, uh, and then to the fourth power. Or, you know, negative 1 to the fourth power, and then the cube root. So, um, you know, a bunch of different ways of thinking about it, you know, it's the exact same thing though. But in any case, um, you know, let's, let's look at it like this. Negative 1 to the fourth power is 1, right, positive 1. The cube root of positive 1 is just 1. So uh, negative 1 to the four thirds is positive 1. So this is just 14 thirds uh, times 1, which is greater than 0. All right. So uh, the derivative is positive in this entire interval here. Okay, so the reason we chose 2 is because 2 times 2 minus 5 is negative 1, and negative 1 to the 4 thirds is pretty easy to evaluate. You know, if we chose uh, x equals 0 or x equals 1, then we'd end up with, uh, you know, negative 5 here or negative 3, which, you know, it would still work out okay, but the numbers wouldn't be as nice. But uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just, you know. Okay, so now um, let's pick uh, 3 for this interval. So we pick 2 for this interval, let's pick 3 over here. So remember the, the break is at 2.5. So 2 is in this interval, 3 is in this interval. So we'll do 3. Uh, so f prime to 3 equals 14 thirds, okay, 14 thirds uh, times the quantity 2 times 3 minus 5 then to the 4 thirds. 2 times 3 minus 5 and then to the 4 thirds. Okay. So um, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 minus 5 is 1, so this is 14 thirds uh, times 1 to the 4 thirds, right? And 1 to any, you know, finite number is just uh, 1, so 1 to the 4 thirds is 1, so this is just 14 thirds, um, which is also positive. So uh, positive, all right, so what do we see here? Um, well, first of all, anyway, that's, that's it for step 3, determine the sign of f prime of x in each interval. Oops. Uh, and then step four, apply the first derivative test to find extrema. So if we apply the first derivative test, we see, uh, okay, uh, positive derivative, okay, f prime is positive, that means f is increasing. Here, f prime is still positive, so f is still increasing. So actually, uh, increasing function, then uh, the derivative is zero right at this one specific point, and then the derivative is positive again. So increasing function, zero derivative, and then increasing function. So this is actually, uh, not a low, you know, there is no local min here and there's no local max here. So it's still a critical point because the derivative is zero, but um, it's not a local max and it's not a local min. And actually this is the only critical point and this is the only thing that happens. So uh, what we can say then is uh, f of x has a new local extrema. 
And remember, extrema is just a fancy word that means mins and or maxes. So this function f of x has no local mins and no local maxes. So that's our answer for uh, example three with finding all the local extrema with the first derivative test.